On today's episode of the Duran Messinger Show, we talk recent Longhorns news. Longhorns fans, don't forget to like and subscribe for more content. It's greatly appreciated. We got a different setup today. We've had some tech difficulties. I'm hopefully getting a new camera so you guys don't have to have this blurry vision all the time. But Dylan, we're back better than ever. And the first topic, Dylan, we have to talk about is Mr. Gary Patterson. Now, on Friday, Patterson was hired by the Longhorns as a special assistant to the head coach. Dylan, what an interesting job title for him. For Sarkeesian, of course, is going to be the uh, key assistant. What do you think about this hire for Texas? Well, obviously, Patterson's going to be, you know, in a Stark's ear a little bit, giving him some advice. But I mean, what's funny is that in order for him to accept this job, they had to make an opening I think on their website, yeah, online. <laughs> so basically, anyone could apply. So I actually applied, Devin. Sadly, got rejected, but I did some experience. Um, I know what I'm talking about. That's pretty much all I put in there. So you know, someday, someday I might be a special assistant. But Devin, this is, this is a good get. Not only is Patterson going to be giving you know Texas a little bit of emotion on the sidelines, just get ready for all those pan shots to Patterson, just looking pissed as the defense gets scored on or something like that. But also, there's a lot of experience. He's got ties, you know players in texas you know recruiting wise so this is going to help out stark a lot uh in state and uh i mean i would imagine out of state as well because patterson's name does hold a lot of weight he has done has done really well uh during his tenure yeah he started as the head coach at tcu in 2000 obviously got fired mid-season this past season but he built a culture there and obviously turned into a little bit of a longhorn killer in the past decade or so i think this is a good hire for longhorns and the fact that it adds a little bit of that grit that it seems like this past team has missed now obviously gary patterson is not the head coach of this team it appears like he's not going to be the defensive coordinator or anything either so i'm sure he's going to have a big role in the week to week but on the field maybe not as much but yet again you just need the pieces in place in terms of coaching and players they each have to add something to that culture and obviously it looks like he's going to do that and Dylan it certainly can't hurt the Longhorns to add a former head coach as an analyst the note that I had is that if you look at Nick Saban at Alabama and even if you take away looking at coordinators you look at the analysts he has year over year it's seemingly always a ton of ex-head coaches that are just trying to clean up their reputation, you know, be on a winning team, and then once their uh, job prospects look good, they jump. Now, obviously, Texas would want something like that, too. A ton of experience with extra eyes on the field helping out, and, I mean, we'll see. Gary Patterson is famous for not liking the Longhorns, Dylan, so it's kind of funny to now see him Wearing some burnt orange, I kind of like it. He's got a lot of Twitter maybe. accounts to unblock, but yeah, Dylan, go ahead. Yeah. Maybe they're going to be – well, the problem is he could be throwing the from the inside, but that's just, you know, hypothetical, you know. Yeah, I, the double yeah. agent, I don't think so. Theory, he could be doing it, but we'll have to keep an eye on it. Be careful if he's, like, slipping uh, play sheets over to TCU sidelines. Stop. But, uh, the game. but I think overall we're both excited for this hire. One of the uh, – many news from this past week or two in the next one Dylan look at that transition we got Jaleel Billingsley a transfer from Alabama he's a tight end Dylan what do you think about Billingsley well if you're trying to use him in the run game Devin it's not going to go well for you but uh during his first two years as well as Stark being there as well he was using him in the H-back formation so that's basically I would say it's like the fullback position so between the QB and the halfback to use him just like from the backfield get, get some speed and possibly have him come out of the backfield into a route which he is actually a really good route runner Devin I would you can't you're not going to compare him to him but the style is like a Kyle Pitts type of like wide receiver cross between a tight end so he's big he's big and strong boy receiver but he's not necessarily good enough to be blocking in the running game that normally you would use a tight end for you know down uh, on the offensive line so look for him to just be put out in the uh in the slot to create those mismatches with safeties and those poor linebackers that are going to have to go up against him. Because, Devin, he ran, a, uh, I believe, a 4.6440. So this guy uh, is very fast for being, you know, 6'4", 230 pounds. So look for him again with those mismatches and as well as a deep ball threat just to really get whoever's throwing the ball this year 
to get him the ball deep because he's the guy that can uh, make game-changing plays, especially especially on third down. That's probably where he's going to be used, just like, you know, defense going to have to key in on where he's at because there was flashes definitely at Alabama. His usage rate wasn't what you would like to see, but uh, I think I think Stark sees a lot in him, and, and I think during that recruitment visit, Stark probably told him, like, hey, this is how we're going to use you, and that's probably what uh, made him uh, join the 40 acres rather than going to Tennessee or Ole Miss. Yeah, like you said, usage wasn't too high. I got some stats from the past season. He caught 17 passes for 256 yards and three touchdowns. So, yes, he did see the field. Nick Saban at least let him onto the field at times. But obviously at Texas, he wants to see the field a little bit more. The pros I have, you've already listed most of these. He's got great size for a tight end, six foot four. He's not Jared Wiley, who's like 6'6 six, six or 6'7, six, who has now transferred to TCU, but yet again, 6'4", that works. And then, as you said, athleticism to line up outside. We need to see some blocking from him, but he's able to win matchups against cornerbacks, nickelbacks, which is obviously promising from the tight end position if your guy can move like that. And then he adds some experience to that tight end room. Yet again, he hasn't played a ton on the field, but he at least has seen the field. Right now, Texas's current tight end group is relatively inexperienced. You know, Cade Brewer is gone for Texas, and because of that, the Longhorns lost the majority of the returning snaps. Billingsley adds a little something there. But the things to prove, Dylan, you were kind of touching on that earlier. He's got to be able to win the tight end job, obviously, if we want to see him on the field. At Alabama, he lost to Cameron a lot, too. And Latu had a great national championship game despite the loss for Alabama. Now, obviously, Latu is a great player, but Billingsley is going to have to show up and show that he's the best tight end in that group. But overall, Dylan, I think the Texas tight end room is pretty promising. Yeah, but the only thing I would say is just like I, I, I would not expect him to come in and ever be that blocking tight end you're hoping for. So you're going to need another tight end. He's going to be that second tight end option that's mostly just used in the receiving game to compliment Xavier Worthy. Exactly, and that's hopefully the floor for Billingsley. But yeah. you also stole my next point because that was the next thing he has to prove. He's got to be able to block if he wants to see the field and win that starting tight end job. Yeah. That's kind of what cursed Jared Wiley last year and why I feel like, in my opinion, he's probably transferred now to TCU is because he just wasn't the blocking type that Brewer proved to be on the field. If Billingsley wants a lot of snaps, he's going to have to do that play in and play out or else they're just going to go to younger guys on the team. Now, Dylan, another transfer uh, target we got here, a recent addition, we got Isaiah Nayor out of Wyoming, of all places, Dylan. What do you think about this ad for Sarkeesian? Well, it's, I mean, he led the Mountain West in receiving touchdowns, Devin. He's got experience, so bringing him to the locker room, and I'm Assuming he's going to be hungry, coming from Wyoming, he's a, he's a, a former two-star athlete out of actually Fort Worth, Texas. So he is a Texas native. Don't know how he was handling the Wyoming leather, but I'm sure he's glad to be back in Texas getting some, you know, 50-degree winners. But uh, I think it's going to be a huge game. This is a guy that you can, uh, again, put, um, help complement a Xavier Worthy uh, in the receiving court because Billingsley, that's a good get, but it's not necessarily going to uh, fill those needs at receiver, especially as that number two, number three option. Uh, receiving wise so it's going to be huge hopefully he brings that spark to the locker room that added competitiveness that um that age we're talking about obviously he's not old old but again you know that experience is going to do wonders for texas who is looking to add uh guys like that to build out that locker room that we know that was a, a huge issue huge issue last year and um he's going to be huge for viewers or card ever ends up starting so just getting him in here and, and getting those reps in is going to be huge i think it's a i think it's a really really good get yeah, I agree. He put up stats, too, at Wyoming. I mean, yeah. if you're going to transfer from any of those conferences, you want some stats. Last season, he caught 44 passes for 878 receiving yards and led the Mountain West in touchdown receptions with 12. Now, you're talking about he adds a little bit of depth to that starting lineup for Texas. It's too early for me to try to pencil him in anywhere, but I'd assume, obviously, Xavier Worthy is pretty safe there. Jordan Whittington, he's a solid number two guy that can play out of the slot. So I think Nayor, he's probably lining up outside. I would 
assume right now that he's got a fast track for that number three job, but Texas also has a lot of other young receivers that are going to be fighting for that spot, but right now that's a very open competition in my eyes. Now the pros, Dylan, Naor is six foot three. Now Texas hasn't had size at that wide receiver position in about maybe two or three years, so this adds a little bit of something there, and he's got decent speed to complement that too, so it's not just length and nothing else. He's made some good catches at Wyoming. I watched some highlights against Northern Illinois, I believe it was, and he was putting on a show. He had two touchdown receptions and a rushing touchdown as well on a uh, end-around play, but Dylan, I think they're going to save that for Worthy and Whittington, so don't expect to see that at Texas, but hey, Sark, if you're uh, seeing this video, maybe prove us wrong. Now, things that he can prove, you know, Dylan, Wyoming is nice. But you got to be productive under the bright lights of DKR on a Saturday night. You said he's from the Fort Worth area, Arlington, Mar uh, not Martin, Arlington Lamar specifically. So I'm sure he's probably likely grew up dreaming about putting on that burnt orange and playing at DKR. Now's the chance that he has to do it. Can he produce? And like I said, he adds depth to that wide receiver position. Marcus Washington last year was kind of thrust into the number two role after Jordan Whittington got hurt. Now Washington can compete with Nayor for snaps and overall just adds to the entire experience of the locker room. So I can't really complain. Do you got anything else about Nayor? I was going to ask him that stuff earlier. I said Billingsley almost in Tennessee or Ole Miss. I meant Nayor. He Nayor, yeah. from Tennessee during the offseason, and he had um, you know an offer from Lane Kiffin and Ole Miss yeah. to come play for them. So – these are two other SEC programs that I would say are middle of the pack. I know Tennessee is, has been working there every offseason. We're like, oh, Tennessee, this could be their year. Uh, and they usually end up, you know, a little below uh, the mid-ground. But, I mean, those are two relatively solid SEC teams that UT was able to get uh, Nayar to flip from them and come to the 40 Acres. So, he's, he's had offers. He's a, seen as a good player throughout the, throughout the nation, it would look like. So, this is, again, a, a good get. Yeah, they were actually committed to Tennessee and flipped yeah. to Texas. So that's a direct, I guess, a win in the transfer portal for Sark. Now, not transfer portal related, Dylan. Our last player we got, we got Larry Turner Gooden. He committed at the All-American game, the better All-American game, Dylan, the San Antonio former All mm -hmm. Army All-American Bowl. I don't think they call it that anymore, just the All-American Bowl. But what do you think about this safety ad for Sark? Well, this is definitely, you know, in San Antonio, it's better to evaluate players because Under Armour's 120-degree Florida experience, wherever that was, was not, yeah, probably not the best way to evaluate your players. But this guy, I mean, he played safety and receiver both in high school, so he's he's got a familiarity with both sides of the ball. I mean, I'm assuming he's going to be playing safety when he's coming to UT, Devin. That's what he was recruited for. So, again, I mean, this guy, he's great in the run, as a run stopper. He's a, you know a good tackler and he's great off the ball so he's got uh, those certain qualities in a safety that you're looking for and again i mean this is secondary help you know ut will never say no to a guy in the secondary joining the team so it'll be interesting to see uh the competition whether he transfers in a year just with this whole new system of players you know you recruit one and you don't know if he's going to be there all four years so it'll be interesting to see but i think this is a huge one and it's a kid that from all all reports is, is motivated to win. He's, he's a guy that's hungry. So, Yeah, I'm going to go on the flip side there, Dylan. You're already talking transfer. I'm talking Longhorn legend here. Let's put the positive out there. Oh, okay. All right. Now, Larry, go out there and win that job. And, uh, yeah, make some plays under those lights that we were talking about for Naor. Now, Turner Gooden chose Texas over schools such as Colorado and Maryland. I believe he had an offer from USC, but that was prior to Lincoln Riley getting there. And even if Lincoln wanted to try to grab him in his recruitment, it was kind of late to try to do that anyway. So Texas really had a great opportunity to land Turner Gooden, and they did just that. He missed most of his senior season with injuries, unfortunately, and he's planning to enroll early. So we should be hearing a little bit about him in the spring, obviously. The names that you guys are listening to in the spring are a little different. Dylan hinted at it earlier. Ewers versus Card. Um, there's honestly probably about 50 other position battles to name there, but that's the one that you guys want to think about. 
And according to that 24-7 sports composite, Dylan, that we all love to look at, Turner Gooden is the 15th ranked safety in the 2022 recruiting cycle in the nation. Obviously pretty decent. And then I'm going to talk about some of the pros that I saw from his film. You already touched on some of these. He's six foot, which might not really stand out too much, but for his safety, that works for me. He's got ball skills, which he showcases at both safety and wide receiver, as you mentioned. He makes plays at wide receiver, which showcases his playmaking ability, but at safety, he comes away with plenty of interceptions, which he needs to do, obviously. And a way to get on the field, Dylan, you were talking about the uh, starting job battle. He's also good at kick returning and punt returning, and that's always an easy way to try to see some playing time early. He can do just that. Obviously, he's also got some competition with some other returning Longhorns at that position. But yet again, you can at least get yourself on the number two in the depth chart there. And then the thing maybe I like the most from his highlights on Huddle is that he's a big hitter, but he's a smart big hitter, Dylan. There's a difference. Now, you guys might say, what is a smart big hitter, Devin? Does that even exist? Yes, it does, because he puts that helmet, Dylan, right on the football. Yep. And he's forcing fumbles that way. He's not just trying to lay you out. I mean, that's all nice and dandy, but it's obviously better to lay someone out and force a fumble. He did just that in high school. Obviously, high school versus college, there's a little bit of a difference there. But if he can continue to do that and show some evolution and progression and practice and get on that football field, hopefully we get to see that on Saturday. You got anything else for our guy, Turner Gooden? Well, Devin, compared to the other two guys uh, on the roster, safety-wise, when you look at, like, four-star safety Austin Jordan and uh, top-ten safety prospect Brian Allen Jr., I think he's got the best chance to, you know, be on the field his freshman year, especially to do it in that kick return game. So this is a guy that uh, his, his ceiling isn't as high, but he could be uh, easily a plug-and-play guy this season. I agree. And those other guys you listed, too, I love them. I've seen both of them in high school. Austin Jordan, he's kind of interesting because he could be, I know 24-7 sports lifts him at a safety, but I could see him playing even nickelback or corner. So I'm really interested to see where he plays. And then Brian Allen Jr., I mean, if you want a safety, that's the guy I want. The Alito, I don't know if he started all four seasons, but I want to say he did. He at least saw the field all four seasons. Yeah. I got to see him quite a bit, and I think that he could be the uh, – field general type of player back there but yet again as you mentioned Larry Turner Gooden in the end is still competing against these guys for playing time but you also mentioned he's got the fast track as a uh, potential special team star so we'll see now guys don't forget to like and subscribe for more content we hope you enjoyed this video hopefully the technical difficulties and the camera quality gets a little bit better in the near future you subscribing can definitely help out with that. So we appreciate it. And until then, we hope you have a great rest of your day.